So today on the Odds On Pod, we have I'm this is electric. I'm excited. This guy kills it. He is one of the hottest comedians today. My, one of my personal favorites. The Nolan Ryan of nicknames. The Iverson of Instagram. Ooh. The head honcho of a game gang of about thirty characters. Ooh. He's the host of the brilliant dumb show on Bro Bible. He is Robbie Berger. How you doing, brother? I tell you, that is the probably the best intro I've ever got. I mean, I'm happy we could just close the interview now. I'd be happy. I mean, that was prime time. I appreciate that. Now I'm really good. I was good. Yeah, we're juiced and we're ready to go. Yeah, I like that a lot. I appreciate that. What was the Allen Iverson one? Yeah, no, I had it written down here, if you couldn't tell. I had the Iverson of Instagram, because I'm not so good at uh, keeping Ooh. it in the old head of mine. So. Oh, I'll take the AA. Anything Allen Iverson's good. <laughs> Well, so just to start off, uh, Jason had a quick question. We yeah, weren't man. sure what to call you because you, you go by a couple a lot names. of names. You got a lot of <laughs> names, man. And I feel like, I feel like it, it depends on the moment. It depends on like the situation where you're at, what you're eating, what you're doing. So like Robbie, Bobby, Bobby Caesars, what, what do you want from us? You know what? I think you actually nailed it. It's, it's kind of like what I'm doing. If I'm golfing, I call it Bobby Fairways. Uh, <laughs> you know, podcast, it's big game, Bob. I, I mean, I switch it up. Uh, but anything, Bob, Robbie, my, my parents call me Robbie. That's, that's my actual name. Um, but, I mean, anything that feels comfortable, let it fly. Perfect. I, I like that. Perfect, brother. So I had some questions for you because we know some similar people. I don't know if you know this. I was actually an intern for Coos back oh, in the day. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I kind of was curious. How did – because I know Coosy and the old real fellows kind of helped you blow up. How did that whole thing start? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, me, you know, just starting, I would always do different comedy videos and a lot of the shit, you know, they see me post on the Instagram um, and I would always send it out. I feel like that's the, way, the best way to get your followers up. Or, so I would send it out. And Old Row would always end up seeing it and, and posting it a lot. So I, I do owe a lot uh, to them over there. They've been great. They had me on the podcast. And, I mean, this is when I had 5,000 followers, you know, if that. And they helped grow it. They helped put me out there. And I, I always say I always owe a lot to them. So anytime they want me on the pod or whatever it is, I, I never say no to them. Yeah, well, you're always electric on their podcast. And the one video I'm sure you get brought up all the time, but not today, Bubba. Yeah, yeah, for sure. that was, again, that was something that they had posted as well. Yeah, so have you ever had an interaction with Bubba Watson outside of that video? No, no. I wish I have tried constantly to get him onto the podcast. Yeah. Um, DMing him, trying to find different caddies on tour that know him, like everything. Um, haven't been able to. You think your ghost protocol on the tour, they yexed you out for that video? Could be, could be. <laughs> Uh, you know, a lot of the guys like it, like the Tony Finau's and, and those guys. I think you got to you got to walk a very fine line of not being, you know, if you're golf hack and not being obnoxious because there is a fine line there for sure. Um, but I, I don't think I don't see why Bubba would want anything to do with my podcast. It would probably be best for him. <laughs> so I can't fault the guy for that. We were talking travelers bets yesterday, Will and I, and he dropped that not today Bubba on me because I like Bubba <laughs> this weekend. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Woody loved it. I'll tell you that. Woody loved it. Oh, did oh did he see the video? I haven't shown it to him yet, but I dropped it not today, Bubba. And uh, oh, he, that's great. Yeah, he dude, I tell it. you, Woody, Woody was a character. He was awesome. We had a lot of fun with him. He's a good guy. I love Woody, but I have to edit his podcast, and that man can go on stories, on stories, oh, on stories. Can he? It's a four-hour <laughs> session every week. Yeah. Oh, he. I mean, he just. It's amazing how much he has in the chamber. <laughs> yeah. I mean, vault. he could just. It's endless. Yeah, he's got a loaded. crazy vault. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a vault. It's just a story vault, and he could just keep going. Do you think if, if Bubba were to join your podcast, you would rock, like, the polo all the way buttoned up? Like, would you match him? <laughs> would you go in and be like, make it like a Bubba appropriate podcast? Like, do you Dude, think he would find that insulting? Oh, or do you think he'd God. say, like, okay, I respect it? It's funny you say that because I do think about it. It's like I'm DMing this guy and everything, and I think, okay, shit. Well, if he did decide to go on to the podcast, how would I approach it? Because I've been busting his balls for so long, but I would have so much respect for him for, for coming on. Um, yeah, I would go full, full Bubba Gear. I'd probably have the Not Today hat that we had been selling. I, I mean, I would just go all out for that. It'd be a big one. So we are a gambling podcast, and – we went through some of your videos, and one of the all-timers is the Lady Gaga Super Bowl prop bet that's that you awesome. had. 
That's awesome. So we'll give you a little backstory on that one. Yeah. So we, we actually, I was living in Miami, Florida and um, my buddy who was my roommate at the time, a friend of a friend who worked for the stadium. I think it might've been, I think that might've been in New York. I could be wrong. Um, but whoever it was, it worked for the stadium. So we kind of had like a little inside to what the halftime song was going to be uh-huh. the first song. So we, we did it, you know, we put as much money on with those prop bets though. They limit it to them. So you can't bet, like the Super Bowl prop bets, the Gatorade, you can't bet a certain amount of money. Well, how much would you have if there was no limit? Because, I mean, was it that good of a, a good info? Well, so the year before he told us, and he got it right, and we didn't bet it. So oh, we were wow. kicking ourselves. So we told ourselves we are definitely going to bet it, you know, the next time we come around. And sure enough, it did. Um, but the issue with it is she started the song with God Bless America. Oh, boy. So, yeah, so so we had heard the song and we had put um, Poker Face, when Lady Gaga was pouring that, performing the halftime show, we bet on Poker Face to be the first song. That's what we were told we were going to get. We got great odds on it. So we said, fuck it. I think it was like 200 to win like eight or or even a grand. I don't know for sure what it was. Um, and she goes into like a little God Bless America song for like 10, 15 seconds but then bust into poker face. So we just went nuts and I posted it and it, it went all over. Did that count? Yeah. How did they, how they grade that? Great question. We thought for sure that it did. Didn't count. That's my oh, fuck. Yeah. If you put other, um, you know, they gave you the different Lady Gaga songs. And then if you bet other, that would have cashed. A field um, bet. Yeah. And it was going so fast. We didn't even think of it. So like, if you see my reaction, I'm going ballistic. Uh, you know, just I couldn't believe it, and then uh, now it, it ended up not happening. But we you got a good video out of it. We don't have to blast the sports book. That's a little ratty, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But then at the same time, you'd have people who picked other who would have been mm. upset if they gave Poker Face. You know what I mean? But like I said, I'll I'll take the two hundred dollars that I lost for the video that we got any day of the week. Oh yeah, money was well spent. Uh, my my wife thinks I'm ridiculous because. I love those prop bets. I find them fascinating. Best. And so right when like it begins, I have my, my stopwatch out for the national anthem. And she's like, what yep. are you doing? And I'm like, don't talk to me during this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me watching a horse race. I'm like, come oh. on over. Let's do it, baby. Oh, for sure. For sure. That's what makes it so, I mean, especially the Super Bowl people do that. Um, and then you got your true gen- degenerates, like my friend who's staying with me right now, who will bet on, who will win the tip off in a regular NBA season game. That means nothing. So like those, I feel like a lot of people do the Super Bowl prop bets, but you know, then you got guys that'll bet who wins the tip in a Suns versus Pistons game. It's, it's insane. That, That's hardcore. Yeah. I mean, it's I'd insane how much you can bet on. Yeah. Oh, I can't say I haven't <laughs> done it before. I definitely have. Um, but yeah, those Super Bowl props, you can't beat them. They're the best. So what do you think was your biggest take though? Cause there's been a couple of gambling videos. I saw, I believe it was a, Correct me if I'm wrong. Is a Packers game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That what, what was that? What was the score on that one? It was so. It was the we did. Um, me and my buddy Joey Coldcuts, who's a big personality. Electric. Love that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's he's an absolute character. Uh, it was before we had to go to work. We did a sixteen parlay on an NFL Sunday game, and uh, the Packers were the last game, and uh, they were down. I believe it was it was so long ago, but I think they were down like 14. So we needed to not only tie the game, but then if you go into overtime, usually those overtime games are ending in a field goal. Mm-hmm. Um, so we needed so much to happen, and it did. So, I mean, we just went absolutely ballistic. It was, it was nuts. Of course, you see the good ones on the Instagram. We also have the bad beats too, though. What, that, what was the first thing Cold Cuts bought after, with that score? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. That's a new pair of question. shoes. Yeah, well, he had to go to work, but he probably after he left work just balled out on like a steak dinner or something. <laughs> he, he probably would have done the same thing to be honest, even if he lost the bet. Yeah. How much has he spent on his golf wardrobe? Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez, a lot, a lot. Like he'll he'll get a he'll get a different shirt just for just because we're going out. Um, I think if he knows that he's going to be filmed a lot, or if that I'm there. He definitely ramps it up, you know, yeah. outfit wise, but he's had like when I first met him, he's had all these golf outfits. So it's like 
he had been doing it before. He's a nut. He's a total <laughs> nut. I love the guy, but he's, it leads to the funniest shit. I want to, I want definitely want to weigh in. Um, he definitely ripped ass on that backswing. Definitely. Without Definitely a doubt. Replaced. And he, <laughs> he, deni- he denies died. it. To, he'll take it to his grave. He refuses. I know he did. I put that shit on repeat. I couldn't <laughs> stop. I was like, you can't be that loud. And then I was like, yeah, it is. Oh, dude. Stay yeah. We, we got it. Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I thought yeah, I just lost you. We got we to gotta, uh, bring him on the show one of these days, and you guys can call him out. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you get a couple ones lined up on him. Yeah, for sure. Just tee off on him. He'll take it to his grave, I promise. <laughs> so one other thing I've noticed, I've been going back through a lot of your, your podcasts and watching some videos. You love to, uh, to cite the Wikipedia when, when you're uh, talking to your guests. One, do you have a Wikipedia? No. Two, do you want one? Hell yeah. I think that helps for the blue check mark. <laughs> I want I want that fucking thing. I don't I have really a blue don't. check mark. Jimmy has a Wikipedia. Jimmy has a Wikipedia. How do you got the how do you got the Wikipedia? I I used to be a football player at one point. Well, there oh. you go, Jimmy. Talk, then you, not only Jimmy. do you deserve a Wikipedia, you deserve a blue check too. You've paid your dues. One of the primo athletes, I think, of my generation. How about Kaler over here? Wow. I didn't <laughs> know that you're just it's gonna bust that out on me. <laughs> well, you you interviewed a uh, preeminent punter and media personality and Pat McAfee. We have our very own Jimmy Kaler, D1 punter extraordinaire. Atlanta practice team. Oh, Thank you very that's much. That's awesome. That, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I think I got my my Wikipedia page in my one month in Atlanta. I think that's what oh, hey, that's all it takes though. So Kaler, you got the blue check. No, I don't. That's bullshit. Oh, I need to oh, get I, one though. Yeah, hell yeah! If you got the Wikipedia page, they gotta get you. I'll I mean, link that to them. Yeah, yeah. You paid your dues on the field uh, possession right. game too. Are your push up? Are your uh, what's it called? Your bench press? Is that on the Wikipedia page? No, it's not. <laughs> Combine <but> bench press. <laughs> these assholes. They they they. Uh, we talked about the. I don't know who it was. Some punter did like twenty three reps or something, and I was like, "How many do you guys think I did?" And what Will said, like three and Jason six, six, six. two twenty five, hey, so out Denver's. of my realm of my world. And I did eighteen. Okay, but, there, like, there you go. You, still you, got you guys it. have both seen me in person. Like two. All you I said six, about bro. I squat. said six. <laughs> I take a step back with punters because you know there are some of them. Yeah, they got the big legs, but I don't know if your upper body well, is going to smash. I'm telling you, push-ups. McAfee could probably do fifteen right now. Yeah, he's. A, I tell you, he's actually he's a pretty strong guy. He's, he's and a he good had athlete. a couple. He yeah, he jacked some people up in the uh, you know in his time. Yeah, Trendon Holiday. Yeah, he you represents got, punters very well. He does. You got your interview with him. You get a full body shot. See the yeah. I mean, he's got a killer. He's got a killer upper body too. He does. Yeah, he sure as hell did. We had to do ours on Zoom, um, but dude, Pat Pat's as good as it gets. I mean, he is. He, he's he's a fucking character. I'm hoping he's our next Monday night guy, Monday night football. I yeah. do too. We touched on that. I I don't. He says that they want somebody who knows the X's and O's a little more. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, I want I'm, I'm with that. Fuck that. I mean, so many people would want it. It'd be yeah. different, and it'd be just incredible. I, I, I was pushing for it. Or give him the McAfee mobile. Like, let him have, like, the booger <laughs> thing on the sideline. Like, I want to yeah. see him in that shit that goes to the second, like, level. Totally. That's, that. that's a great point. I think he'd be – he said he hates sideline interviews – like sideline reporting, yeah. but that wouldn't be really sideline because you're pretty much in, I mean, I think it'd be perfect for him. That's a good point. So we, I noticed recently one of the things you wrote about, uh, you wrote about like James Harden's strip club Jersey <laughs> retirement. Yeah. Inaugurate, like, and we were actually talking about the NBA's return going to Orlando. And one of the things Will brought up was the strip clubs in that vicinity. <laughs> want to know, do you think that's going to be an issue down there? For Harding, clearly. For Harding. What about Kawhi? uh, No. No, I don't see Kawhi. Look, I would love footage of Kawhi getting after it. There is. Is there? Well, I will send you the video. I mean, the picture. Getting after it in a strip club? Getting after it. That's awesome. Private (laughs) dance. (laughs) Private dance. Somehow got captured. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I guess strip clubs would be like Super Bowl weekend to where they kind of just pop off. It would kind of be like that down there. I don't think anybody knows really how it's going to work down there. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns to it. So I kind of myself want to see how that, you know, plays out. Yeah, I think we're, we're invested, obviously, in sports returning, but we're also invested in sort of like 
the real world setup with cameras following everyone around. I want to see the behind the scenes footage. That's what oh, I want. for sure. Or even like them just going out to dinner and like, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, each other's hotel rooms. It, it, it could be just an absolute circus. I want to see the card games. Card games, I'm sure, will be yeah. great. I mean, there's just so many different things to, to take in. So we were going to get into a little bit of some of the things we've, from listening to your podcast and your campaign, some of your likes and dislikes. Huge sure. Caesar salad guy. And Huge. I have a little qualm with one of your takes. Doggy bag sal- Caesar salad is a terrible move. If it's a, here's where I'll counter. Why do you think it's a terrible move? Who wants to be the guy at the bar with the Caesar salad? You're in, I know a kid in high school who went to McDonald's with his basketball team, ordered a salad, rest of high school, called him Salamander. You know what? It's coming from a guy who really appreciates a good Caesar salad. And the bottom line is if the starter Caesar is too big and you want to take it home, you might just have to be at the guy with the bar with the doggy bag. It, it, it might just have to be the case. I'm a huge Caesar salad guy. But there's not a lot of salads that I can't finish, you know? Make it soggy, though. Good. Yeah. You know what, Kayla? That's a good point. It, it might, but you know, that's, if it's a fancy Caesar salad, you still want to take it home because if you know, a soggy you. fancy Caesar salad is going to be better than the Caesar you could make at home. I'm fine. That's with not Caesar even the, too. That, that's yeah. not the elite tier of appetizers. I mean, if, I mean, if you're ordering Caesar salad for the table, but I mean, I want mini hot dog, like the little pigs in a blanket or yeah, but wings you know is what, a bad though, one. I think there's a difference between an appetizer and a starter. <clears throat> oh, yes. Get into Heck. it. Yeah, I, I do. I like for me a Caesar salad is a starter. For me a soup is a is a starter, not a you know, not an appetizer. You know, uh, mozzarella sticks to me, that's an appetizer. You know? I, I just my just my perspective. Bag. My my big thing with the doggy bag, you mentioned you people don't want to be the guy who has the doggy bag at the table while the meal's going on. Correct. My thing was I would tip the waiter and have them hold it in the back for me. That's doable too. And I, that was what? that was me. Yeah, no, that's a good. And if you're at a fancy spot, you shouldn't even have to tip them because you know you're paying top dollar for a quality meal. You should be able to to refrigerate your Caesar. Right, and if you go to a really good spot afterwards, coat check your Caesar. Coat check. You could coat check your Caesar. Now that's a soggy. Caesar. That's a soggy Caesar. That'd be oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you trust coat check person? Do you I trust could, them? Not with my Caesar. With my jacket, yes. Not with my Caesar. That would be crazy. Do you do you like a sardine on your Caesar? Yeah, how do you like it? What's your what's your go-to? A couple croutons. Not believe it or not, not a huge anchovy guy. Depending on the situation, keep it simple. Starter Caesar just to get me going. Couple croutons. Not even I don't really even do a parm, too much Parmesan on there either. Mm. Purist. As the as the resident um, Jew in this in this podcast, Shalom, and. Uh, I respect the food take. Number one Shalom. food, bagel, bagel and cream cheese. Yeah. Love that. There we go. Love that. Glad just somebody had, appreciates that because I got did, roasted for that. Just did Father's Day with the family, brought them famous fourth. I live in Philly. They loved it. My I question is, if you had your last bagel on earth, you could choose how you want it, what kind, what goes on it, how you toast it, do you toast it? How would you take it? What would you do? Such a good question. Last bagel on earth. I'm I'm doing toasted poppy, lox, and the whole works. Cream cheese, onions, capers. Throw it all in there. Let's really get saucy with it. Just go for it. Yeah. If, like if it. it's my last one, I'm 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 going for it for sure. If it's the day before my last day having a bagel, cream cheese. Nice. <laughs> are you are you a lightly toasted guy or do you like a little burntness? What do you what do you think? You Up to toasted? the restaurant, what, whatever whatever the chef recommends, whatever they put in the toaster and and pick to coming out, I, I trust them on it that they know their product. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So, but from one Jew talking- from one Jew to another, exactly. <laughs> we get it. So, start, starting about things that you dislike, I noticed recently the cruise bachelor party. Yeah. I've been on one of those. Got to be I, horrendous. I will tell you, the recovery period was not worth it. Uh, I actually, I lived in Los Angeles at the time. The cruise t- came out of Florida. The flight back to Los Angeles was the worst experience of my entire oh. life. And then I got vertigo afterwards. Mm. Uh, 
So I'm wobbling around Los Angeles for a couple of days, driving, getting caught in traffic, hating everything. It was like an extended cruise, like four days, not worth it. Not you worth it at all. Made me so happy that I told him no, because that, that was what I envisioned. Just stuff <laughs> like that. Of I just think it's ridiculous. I think it's way too long. Uh, and again, you said it best. I mean, the hangover process after is just got to be awful. Can't do it. Yeah, no. I remember I was with my friend. It's final day. We're, all, we're super hungover and we're waiting in the line. You know, the, the customs line to leave. Sure. And he just wanted to just like punch himself in the face. And he, someone went up to him and was like, is this the right line? And he's like, dude, I thought this is the line to get my money back from the casino. Like, and then everyone's just like... Oh, the that, yeah, it, that puts you through the ringer, man. I told him, I told him, I said, the fuck, no, I'm not going. You know, and he knows me, so he understood. But I said, why would I go to that? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I could do a, a two, three-day cruise and have the time of my life, a one-day, two-day recovery. A week cruise, no, too much. No, no, no. And, and Jimmy and I are the old heads here, and I talked to Will about your charcuterie board. Yeah. The barbecue, and Will said, fuck is that? I don't even I don't even consider that to bring that to anything. You know what's so, amazing? That guy yeah. really had the audacity <laughs> to try to to upsell you with the charcuterie board. You're a charcuterie board guy? I like a charcuterie board at like a restaurant. Like I see some good meat and Agreed. cheeses. I'm not bringing that stuff. Yeah, but you're strong, somewhat strong arming someone for a check on a of ordering a charcuterie board for the table. I don't want to eat figs. Yeah, yeah, look, you just there. There's all the, a bunch of mystery items on the charcuterie board. But what I think you would be surprised on is how many people do bring the charcuterie board over. What age I mean, does that start? It's definitely an older age. There's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm, I'm. Jesus Christ, I'm 27. But you know, I, 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 I feel like I still have a lot of charcuterie boards ahead of me to where I'm young <laughs> you enough to where I'm not even getting the midst. You know, wouldn't you agree with that? You have a lot Taylor? coming. You yeah, I got a lot of charcuterie coming. boards coming it's my way, right? <laughs> yeah, do. and when I do see them on seldom occasions, I always wonder how that person who brought it gets the credit that he gets for bringing it. It looks nice. but Until no- everyone's married and the wives yeah. start bringing stuff. See, Kaler, Kaler's brought a couple of charcuterie boards in his day, has he not? I have. I have to carry them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see the need to bring one, but if we're hosting something and my wife wants to put one together as like the hostess, that's fine. Like I'm Fair cool game. with that. Oh. You don't need to be the guy who comes over with the meat and cheeses. What if you bring shitty bread? Like there are so many decisions. And that was this guy. And to be quite frank with you, I tried to be an open mind about him. Even after seeing that he brought it, he was obnoxious. No. <laughs> he was obnoxious. If he could have owned it, if he was like, Bobby, listen, they love it. I'm doing, I'm doing this for the people. You'd have been like, all right, respect. Yeah, if he would have acknowledged me about it, totally different <laughs> ballgame. But he had acted like, you know, it was just another day at the office for him. If he had but a woman behind it, him, it would have been one thing, too. I mean, it, yeah, for sure. For it, sure. You know, I do a lot of shit that the wife puts me up to, you know, and I look Dude. like a sissy for it. Yeah. Will knows. Yeah. That's why we <laughs> said your wife is bench terrifying, press, so you do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the charcuterie board, I, I can understand after a certain age, but then it gets to a point where it's just sitting in the corner and the one guy over there just t- talking up a conversation, all the English cheddar's gone. Yeah. All, all you're left with is the terrible meats and like some brie. Or the goat cheese. And then it just sits there and then it just rots. And it's just, there's a lot more to the charcuterie board than just the charcuterie board. Always has yeah. shitty crackers on it too. She always has shitty crackers. That's what I'm talking about, Jimmy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Jimmy gets it. Let me tell you something. These punters, they get it. <laughs> they do. I've had a board or two in my day. <laughs> so what? you seem like, all right, I'm going to be honest. You're, you're, uh, you're probably a top, top, top parties. I mean, great conversation. What is the worst bachelor party you've ever been to before you knew to say no to bachelor parties? Believe it or not, I swear to you, I, I haven't been to a bachelor party yet. Really? Really? Yeah. That's yeah, cool. I haven't been to a bachelor. I I'm, I think my days are definitely coming, just like the Chikuri board days are coming. Uh, you know, now my friends are starting to, to slowly get, get married. But, you know, my friend group, we really took our time, still are. Smart. And uh, I haven't been the one, I swear to you. Is Cold Cuts anywhere close to being? Oh, Cold Cuts is – Cold Cuts, he actually turns – be sure to wish him a happy birthday, 34. 
four on Saturday. Well, he's so he could, he could right? have a much better answer to that question than me. <laughs> have you thought about, because usually when you go on bachelor parties, you're usually going with your crew, but there's always some stragglers that are, you know, friends of a friend who get to come on. Oh, yeah. Have you thought about the worst type of person to go on a bachelor party? Probably the same guy who brings the charcuterie board. <laughs> We're going probably to a restaurant guy. Friday night. Yeah, the, probably that guy. Um, wine tasting. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, though, because you got a good point thinking about these. I'm sure a lot of them are friend of a friend, you know, that you don't really know. Maybe have crossed path with once or twice, had a family thing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on. But once you're settled in, I mean, you're good to go. It takes like a day, you know, maybe less to, to you're really settled in. I designated one of my best friends. He's the cash collector. So when it's a group of dudes and you have to go to a restaurant or a club or something, he was our guy who would go around all the cheapskates and be like, 200 bucks, you're not getting in. He's, <laughs> he's our cash collector. You, you know what? It's funny because every, every group needs one of those. You do? And because he a lot of people it. don't want to be the guy to do it. You know what I mean? Loves but it. every group needs one of those and it's not an easy role to take it's not, he, not at all. I, I asked him if he wanted to be it and he said yes so that is his <laughs> job from now on it is his forever yeah you see you got out easy you got out very easy because nobody wants to be that guy but you need you gotta have it so you do you're talking about guys you have a lot of gang around you how do you think of the nicknames for them is it just serendipity yeah it, a lot of times it to be honest it comes out of on a whim um, or one of our, our friends in our group names it. Um, but yeah, it just comes on a whim and something that'll flow. So a lot of times the names like Joey Colcutts, for instance, I did one video of him and I'm thinking of an Italian type name, you know, he's an Italian guy. Um, and you know, something that was funny. So I, we always wish we had a better story for how like Joey Colcutts got his name, but that was literally it. We just thought that it really flowed. Um, you know, and it worked, but we do have a good group of friends. It, it really has been awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, Cold Cuts, that's, that's an amazing name. Speaking of now, going back to charcuterie once again, we can stop talking about charcuterie. <laughs> My nickname, Will Charcuterie. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's a funny name, too. And he's such a funny guy that we throw the name on there. It's just, I mean, you just double down. It's great. So how did the connection with the uh, Bro yeah. Bible start? Um, so with Bro Bible, I was working at Four Seasons Hotel. I was a guest services manager. And um, same thing, kind of like how Old Row started, you know, sending them a lot of my stuff and, and they were helping me with different ad deals. They would come to me and kind of play the middleman in different ad deals that we were doing. So I built a relationship with Brandon from there. Um, and then, uh, you know, as the Instagram and, and the podcast began to grow, then they, you know, sat me down and talked about a full-time job with them. Um, yeah. And I mean, one thing led to another and I haven't looked back since. Yeah, hell yeah, brother. What are you? What's looking forward for the podcast? Who's who's some guests you got lined up? Yeah, I mean the one just this was the best one. You know, we were talking about it prior to the show was the group from Entourage, which was I mean I, not many people have heard from them since you know since Entourage came around. So I think a lot of people will be curious to hear kind of what they're doing now and just hear their banter. Um, so yeah, that's like the next big thing is releasing this Entourage uh, episode. Is Turtle still skinny. Yeah, he actually, he's then, he actually, he wasn't there. We had um, Kevin Connolly who played E, Johnny Drama, who's uh, Kevin Dillon, and then Doug Allen who wrote the show. But the turtle definitely is still, uh, still skinny. I've seen him recently. Yeah, I mean, other than, other than uh, Ari Gold, which I heard there might be a spinoff on that, by the way. Yeah. I, which would be amazing. You know what, that's, a, that's funny. I, probably something I, I didn't ask that, and I should have asked that, um, you know, because that's something I had heard. I love Doug- Johnny Drama. Oh God, he is so. He in this interview, you'll see he he's incredible and just like he's got a huge heart. He's just he's a stand up guy. He really is. He's awesome. awesome. Did Doug talk about uh, how he likes to be like a guest character in some of his stuff? Because if I remember correctly, he is one of the casting directors or directors that drama flips out at in one of the episodes. He's like on his phone. Uh, I remember it like vividly because then there's a scene where drama comes back and he's in it and he's like we're gonna have a problem again and i was like I that's, I was that's that when he took, the, he took the golf club to that dude's car was that that episode i mean i feel that's like he did that a episode. lot he might have it wasn't yeah. doug ellen's car but it was another guy's car 
But no, you know what he did say, which was really funny, is you know he of course created the whole thing, wrote it, you know, did all mm-hmm. of that, and then after Entourage was done, they were getting like appearance fees to come, you know, Kevin so Connolly or John, appearance fees where they were getting paid a ton. And here's Doug Allen. It's like I created this fucking thing, and nobody's paying me for an appearance. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's a funny bit, and the banter they have, you could tell how close they are. That's awesome. Um, yeah. One of the cooler interviews I've ever done. It was awesome. So I not to ruin too much in the interview. You have to get too much into oh, it. You're good. Did, did you talk at all about the Kevin and Matt Dillon dynamic? No, no, we really didn't get it. To be honest with you, I'll be completely honest. I didn't know till I started prepping for the interview that I don't think was, anyone really does. It's weird. Yeah. No, not many do. I, I that there's a couple things about this guys that I, I didn't know until I started prepping. Um, but no, we didn't get into it. They talked about how before the show, technically, if he wanted to, he probably could have got paid the most because his Kevin um, Kevin Dillon's resume was one of the best prior to the other guys that that they had. But uh, we did jump into that a little bit. Yeah. So speaking of that, you, uh, I think you could have a future in doing TV and movies. Anything, anything, anyone ever come up to you being extra in the background of a mob movie? <laughs> I would take it. That's for, I'd probably be in the back with the Caesar. Um, but uh, I appreciate that. No, I mean, my goal for me, there was two producers that actually came to me about something and it just never ended up working out, which is the way I kind of guess these things kind of go. Um, you know, my goal has always been host to host some sort of show, be the host of some sort of show that's on TV and, I've always figured that if you follow my group of friends around with a camera, which is what these producers wanted to do, the content you would get is incredible. Cause you get, you know, you get some things from social media and stuff and that's what I'm posting. If you had cameras rolling on us 24 seven, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty bizarre. So was it a reality TV producer? That. Yeah, it was a reality TV producer. These two guys who worked together um, and they were coming out, pretty often and you know we would talk and kind of the way i envisioned it and they um kind of gave me their idea of what they had for it and (laughs) i thought it would have been great um and nothing came from it well i i fuck it i'd watch it million dollar idea yeah i mean we'll we'll see hopefully one day uh you know but they say that's kind of how it goes that people get ideas and then a lot of times it doesn't get pushed through and somebody i hope will come along yeah absolutely Will and I were also talking about Robbie Berger cast in, you know, famous movies. So what would the Robbie Berger in Rain Man sound like? Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, you you didn't didn't think of that one before the interview. No, no, I did not. Could you give me a little bit to work on that? (laughs) You don't have to pull off the Dustin Hoffman role. Yeah, I can get you you that. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, no, I need a little bit for that. I could give you something, though, Jason. All right, let's, let's move away from Raymond. How about Titanic? Robbie Berger oh, in Titanic. To turn Titanic into a comedy. Yep. Somehow, some, I know that sounds somehow, <laughs> some way, I would turn Titanic into a comedy. Would you, push, would you push Rose off of the wardrobe? Would you take that? Or would you be like, listen, there's a lot of room for us. We can both, we can both <laughs> use this. It's, it's definitely big enough. I would have a chat with her about it, but mm-hmm. eventually I think I would give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm a nice guy. I give Sacrifice it to her, but the, 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 con- the conversation would definitely take place. It, you know, also watching you and then seeing the skinny cow version of video of your dad, it seems like the apple doesn't fall too far away from the tree. Were you surprised that he did this and is it the most absurd thing he's ever done? I can't say I was surprised because I've grown up with this. I will say that one was one of the more bizarre ones that we've seen, but I grew up with it. And even like a lot of the stuff from the show, certain bits are based from my dad. I mean, it's really inspired from my dad. And that was cool to kind of see, although it was ridiculous for people to see kind of where it does come from. Um, that's why I enjoyed it, but it's just absolutely outrageous. And yeah, top five of the most ridiculous things he's done. And it, it, there's, it's a pretty long list. It made, it made sense. I, when I heard it, I was like, yes, I've thought of that before, but I don't think I could take it to the next level and the make call. the phone call. 
that's where it's ridiculous. It's one thing to talk about it, but to call the customer service line and complain that he got four vanilla, two chocolate, that's where it gets ridiculous. If, is he more of a chocolate guy than a vanilla guy, and that's where it came from, or he just did not like that it was uneven, and that's just not how it works? Yeah, I just think he was expected an assortment three and three, and he didn't get that assortment, so he was going to make it known. But I don't think I, I don't think it had anything to do with a preference of either. If he if, he, if he's buying an assortment, he expects the three and three assortment. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got a, I have a skinny cow incident too. I, my wife loves those things, and I was supposed to buy the vanilla ones, and I came home and they were chocolate. And that would you consider same. an incident? Yeah, chaos. Well, when she gets pissed at me, it's an incident. Yeah, that yeah, that's chaos right there for sure. Yeah. Oh, my dad, look, he's just about retired now, so he really, I mean, that's what those are the 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 things in life he has to worry about right now, which is which is a great thing, which is a great thing. That guy's paid his dues, that's for sure. I'm envious, yeah. Yeah, he's paid his dues, and now he can uh, he deserves to relax. So, kind of getting to some current sports. I know you're a Yankees fan. <clears throat> Huge, yeah, good man. So we got to talk about the Manfred letter. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it did. We'll see what comes from it. I still want to see what comes from it, um, but it did kind of bite us back in the ass because I jumped all over the Red Sox as far as when they had it or the Astros and. I did a couple takes on my podcast about the Astros and how scummy of a move it is, and we'll see what comes from it. But is it a bad look? Not that about it. I can't deny that. I just don't think he's ever going to unseal it. I mean, it's the Yankees of the Yankees, and he's – he's in. I mean, he's, I think he's in the back pocket. In a way, I almost wish he would so that people would – you know, so we would know. I mean, but – um I don't know. I think I think Rob Manfred's, Manfred's done a terrible job. I mean, he's horrible. He's really taken a lot of pressure off a guy like Roger Goodell, who was by <laughs> far the worst commissioner on sports. Manfred could not have handled the Astros situation worse. Um, I think he even botched the Red Sox situation. He even said Cora was in it, and then all of a sudden Cora wasn't in it. I think he was too quick to jump the gun. Now the Yankees thing, and then the whole union disputes and everything. He's just it's been a rough year for him. Yeah, you should have a John Boy on your podcast. He's great. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I he's had a rough couple of months. Yeah, I mean, it's like, what, what, what do you talk about? It's just yeah. ESPN. It's funny. He's going through. Uh, you know, I talked about it actually with Woody. I was like, you know, how do you guys? By the time you have a four o'clock show, there's been six shows before you who spoken about the same thing. How do you come up with new, new stuff? It, it, it's been interesting to watch. Well, that's the funny thing about Around the Horn is I'm the PA for the show and I help Woody out with it. And a lot of it is on the fly. So like today he won the showdown and he didn't think he was going to win it. So we had a minute break before the showdown and he goes, we'll look up something interesting. I'm freaking out. You know, he's going to go live. So I looked up something about the second base runner um, for the extended uh, after the extra innings. They're going to put a player on second yeah, to be yeah, like a yeah, ghost yeah. runner. Yeah. Which so I actually that's like the funny a lot. thing about those ESPNs. Shows. That's awesome. I didn't know that you were doing. Yeah, he's dude. What Woody was really people really enjoyed him. He he's a great yeah. guest to have. He was awesome. I didn't know that was going to be a rule until I like pulled up ESPN this morning and I was like, oh, it's like all right, that's like the three on three hockey overtime. It's just like let's throw him on second base and let's yeah, see. Yeah, I yeah, I kind of like it. I really do. I think also too pace of play for people who if you're trying to get people to like the game, everything you know they have is pace of play, which is slow. And I get that if you, if you don't really love the game, um, and I think that actually helps. It's a rule that that I actually really like. I'm worried about some of the other things where where they take away from you know things that have been prevalent in baseball for a while. Um, the like no spitting sunflower seeds in the dugout, no like licking your fingers. I know as like a as a batter, I, I've read before that they would rather a pitcher do that and have more control than not. And I'm wondering if it's going to how much impact that's going to have. Like how many players are going to get beamed because a pitcher doesn't have control of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, it could. I mean, it, it's funny, and not just baseball. I think every game is going to change, whether it's a little bit or a lot. Um, and that'll be fun to see, just even differences in that regard. I mean, even going back to the extra inning things, running on second base, it totally changes the way your strategy about going about, do you bunt, get the guy over to third? Do you take three hacks at a single? You know, it just changes the game. And even even small stuff like that can 
can be huge. Yeah. There's that. There's what picture do you want to put in? How's your, how's your, you know, bullpen going to look like? What are you, what are you doing? I think it's going to be super, totally. Super yeah. I think that'll be one of the big things is, is do you bunt? Do you bunk at the guy to third or, or, you know, I think it depends who's coming up and it just, it changes the game, but I think for this in a good way, I really do. You like the universal DH? Yeah. Yeah. I think pitchers in the NL had it so much easier. You pretty much just have a spot. It's like a free out to, yeah. to a degree and pitchers should focus on pitching. That's the way baseball has been. And it should, I, I like the move. I really do. Were you a big time hitter? I wouldn't say big time. I was a pitcher. Um, but I mean, I could swing, I could swing it a little bit if need be. Yeah. <laughs> you don't got to back up the outfield or anything, but I mean, I, I could swing it. We actually talked about backing up the outfield as part of changes we would make to the MLB. We thought it'd be really fun to have an extra outfielder out there who, uh, no, we'll, yeah, we'll also no. want steroids. No, no I disagree. Fun. For fun. Extra outfielder <laughs> had to wear the mascot's hat, big shoes, just like turn it into. Oh, oh, that's it. Yeah. That's a different ball game. Good thing oh. Yankees would benefit on that because they haven't had one, so they could just put an actual body out there. Uh, yeah, hey, anything to change the game, right? I don't put anything past Manfred at this point. Well, that's what I was saying, though, is I want this circus season. It's 60 games. I mean, there's no rules left. Just let them roid up. Let them use pine tar all the way up the neck of the bat. I mean, yeah, like we said before, put an extra outfielder in there. He's not allowed to wear shoes. Put a little soap in front of him on the grass. Fly Think ball about comes this, up. too. Even with the 60 games, say somebody has a great – stretch a great 60 game stretch say he's batting over 400 does he win the bat like you know will he now be the the best batting average of all time like certain That's records and question. stuff like yeah. that yeah, yeah are in ge- everything's going to change about every sport it's pretty wild so yeah put the mascot head on him i mean fuck it why not at this point <laughs> 2020 so you're still you still during uh yankees playoff baseball shit in the dark what's that you still shit in the dark during yankees baseball playoffs for every game yeah if i got to shit sometimes i don't have to shit before the game Mm -hmm. it's just all super i'm a nut when it comes to the you know yankees playoffs i remember that that 09 series uh because i'm from philly yeah yeah so i had my own superstition during that entire during that entire run i wore a penn state jersey for the entire time my young brother went there and someone came up to me at the bar during the nlcs and was like you're not wearing philly's gear and, and I had to look at him and was like, I've been wearing this the entire playoffs. Don't fuck with me. This <laughs> and is you don't, winning. He better leave it at that. He came back and apologized when they were one <laughs> out from winning. He was like, dude, Penn State jersey. <laughs> Nothing like a Penn State good luck charm for good karma, huh? Yeah. Hey, if somebody says that to me, by the answer, fuck it. Let him go. Let him you go. Gotta do it. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> Let him works. Ride. Let yeah. him shit with the door open. I love it. All right. All right, Robbie. I think we're going to wrap it up here with these last uh, questions here. Thanks, bro. You've been killing it. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, cool. All right, Robbie. So we can find you on uh, social. And uh, what are your tags? Yeah, so just uh, Brilliantly Dumb on Instagram. And then um, everything with the show, The Brilliantly Dumb Show. I try and keep it easy for you folks. Cool, man. Next steps for you? Hopefully, you know, like we discussed, the, the ultimate goal is to, to have a TV show. And then, you know, for the now, for the near future, just keep building up the show, keep building up the podcast, uh, you know, social media platforms and see where that takes me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Appreciate it. Before of you course, go, hey, can, I appreciate you guys having me on. Can you give Will a nickname? What's your last name, Will? Albert. A, Albert with an H. I got two things to work on. I got to work on the Rain Man Robbie Burger edition, and now I got to work on Will's <laughs> nickname. So could you give me a day or two? Should, while you're at it, just give us all nicknames. Yeah. Okay. Love, Kayler, if you it, want to go nick- for it. Jimmy, I'll have, I'll have yours in 30 minutes. I love it. <laughs> I'll get something good for you. All right? <laughs> all right. Hey, I appreciate you, boys. I really do. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Yep.